So question six on the June 2008 paper, the mechanics paper, M1. If we have a look at the question, the question looks like this. We have a, it's going to be some kind of moments question. So we've got a plank and we've got a diagram here. And I think we need to add some more information to this diagram. So it's being suspended by two vertical ropes. So we know there must be a tension in the rope here, which we're going to call the tension at B. Also, there must be a tension in the rope at A, which we're going to call unoriginally tension at A. And then we've got various other things we need to add. The plank itself is modelled as, in this case, it's modelled as a uniform rod. So we can see that from the information here. That means that the weight acts at the centre, or the centre of mass uh, is in the middle of the rod. So we know that the weight acts exactly down at 1.2 metres away from A and from B. And because it weighs 12 kilograms, the weight is 12 G, G acceleration due to gravity. We've also got this particle C, and this acts straight down at that point, 0 0.8 metres away from A, and it's 8 kilograms, so the weight is 8 G acting down. Now, before I start anything, I think that's all the information we need to add to our diagram. Before I um, do anything else, I always like to just remind myself, just before I start any questions, because this is the most commonly forgotten part of the moments question. Taking moments question, on a moments question you take moments normally, but people often forget that actually you can write down an expression to do with the tensions acting vertically upwards, no moment, no turning force, just a straight up and down resolution must be equal to 20G. Now I'm going to label that one. I may or may not need that yet, I haven't quite come across it, but I often just write that one down just to remind myself that there's another expression, another way, instead of taking moments, I can just look at the straight up and down forces, two tensions up, two weights acting down. Okay, let's start on A. Question A says find the tension in a rope at B. Well, we've got an expression for the tension in a rope. Unfortunately, we've also got an, uh, an unknown quantity here. So unfortunately, in this case, this doesn't help us at this point. If I want to find the tension in the rope at B, if I take moments around this point A, then there will be a moment the weight of the particle will cause a moment, a clockwise moment, as will the weight of the rod cause a clockwise moment. The only anti-clockwise moment will be the tension at B, which is that one unknown in an equation there. There will be no moment taking into account the tension at A because the distance is zero. And the moment is the, the force times the perpendicular distance, and this is the distance is zero. This con contributes no moment whatsoever, no turning force. So I'm going to resolve... Uh, I'm going to take moments, sorry, I'm going to take moments and I'm going to resolve around A. And that gets rid of that tension A, and that's a really common trick to use. And I remind myself that therefore the total clockwise, because it's an equilibrium, the total clockwise moment must be equal to the total anti-clockwise moment. So if we look here, we've got an 8G acting at a perpendicular distance of 0.8 metres away. We've got a 12G acting a distance of 1.2 metres away. It's the exact centre of the rod. And then we've got the tension at B, the force tension at B, acting a distance at 2.4 away. So we get here 6.4G plus 14.4G is equal to 2.4 tension at B. So we can collect all this stuff together. We find out that and work it out on our calculator using G as 9.8, which is what we use in maths mechanics. I know sometimes in physics, oh, Newton's, my apologies, 9.8. I know that uh, sometimes in physics you use a more accurate version, but for, for maths, uh, A level 9.8 is good enough for all the questions we need. So if we work out what these two bars are multiplied by 9.8 and then divide by 2.4, we get 
0.93 recurring newtons. So if we take, if we round that to three significant figures, also a common thing to be doing, we get 84.9 newtons, three significant figures. Okay, so that's the first part of the question. Let's look at the second part. The plank is now modelled as a non-uniform rod, which means its centre of mass, its, its weight is not going to be acting at the centre. Its weight is not acting at the centre, it's acting somewhere else, a distance, an unknown distance away um, from either end. With the new model, the tension in the rope is A, so we've got some things changed. So because there's some things that's changed, let's draw a new element on our diagram. We've still got a tension at B and a tension at A. We've still got the weight acting down at C, and then we've got, now we've got the weight of the rod, 12G, acting at some unknown distance, where the unknown distance from A, which I'm going to label X, so the unknown distance here is X. Now I've chosen to choose that unknown distance from A because actually that's the distance I want to find is the distance from A. So if I set that up when I take moments then I've already got that distance in. I could have equally called this X and then this distance would have been 2.4 minus X. It just makes our calculations a little bit more difficult. So it's always best to put the unknown distance in for the distance that you actually want to find out. Usually. Not always the case but mostly. So what do we have here? Well we have the particle still weight is 8g, the rod is 12g but it's now acting at not 1.2 meters, it's acting some unknown distance x, and it doesn't matter if my diagram's wrong, and this is actually less than 1.2 meters, it's, it's irrelevant. And um, what I've got here is the tensions, so the tension attached to A is 10 newtons greater than tension attached to B. So I'm just gonna call this tension T, and this one T, plus 10, it's 10 newtons bigger. Okay, so find the distance in the center of mass. Okay, so let's have a look at what's going on now. So again, like I did before, let's just note down that commonly used thing. Let's just resolve straight up and down and let's see what happens. We've now got, straight up and down, we've got 2t plus 10, combining the two tensions, is equal to 20g. And if I call this equation 2, I might or might not need this. Now, if I take moments, again, resolving around A, moments resolving around A, and like I said before, resolving around A, because then that gives us this force times this distance x, which is good, still remains in uh, equilibrium, so we know that the total clockwise is the total anti-clockwise. So let's have a look. We've got 0.8 times 8g, that's the first, that's the particle c. We've now got 12g times x, that's the center, that's the weight of the rod. And then we've got, still got 2.4t, 2.4 times t for the tension of b. Okay? Now, if we collect together this um, left-hand side, and we can also substitute in from the fact from 2, and so in this case we did need it, from 2 we can tell that the tension is equal to 20g minus 10 over 2, is 20g minus 10, all divided by 2, which actually if you calculate it on a calculator, is comes out as 93 newtons. So if we know that, and the reason why I knew I needed this because of this equation here, this equation I've just labelled star, has two unknowns in it, so we have to then use a second equation, which in this case we did. So if we use that information and tidy up, star becomes 12gx on the left hand side, and then on the right hand side we get um, 2.4, oops, we get 2.4t, but we know our t is now 93, and then we're taking away the, uh, the 
G, which is this, we've moved to the right hand side. So again, we can then tidy up, we can work all this out on the right hand side using G as 9.8, divide the answer by 12G, and we actually get this answer for X. Not, uh, not a great answer, but 1.36462 585. So let's round that. Three significant figures 1.36 meters. 3SF. So actually, my diagram did happen to be right, but it didn't necessarily matter. I called this distance x here, so I found out that x is 1.36 meters. So actually, it was over the halfway point before, as a uniform rod, the weight was acting down here, and now actually it's increased by uh, 16 centimeters to the right, closer to B, and actually as a non-uniform rod, the weight was acting here. Okay, end of question.